Everybody, this is Dream, and today we have a seven-game Major League Baseball slate that starts at 12.20 Eastern. I don't know why they're starting the game so early today, but this is what we got for the main slate on DraftKings, so this is what we're going to start with. Uh, we also have the last couple games being at 2 and 3 o'clock, so uh, we may not get the lineups for those before the slate starts, though. So, uh, But we do have an interesting slate here. Pitching is probably pretty good today, considering uh, though there are some high-scoring games on the slate. Uh, before I get started, can you guys smash that like and subscribe button? Uh, let's go ahead and get into it because we don't have a ton of time until this slate starts. So we'll start with our pitchers. Uh, Spencer Strider and Pablo Lopez um, are the top two options at pitcher here. Now Strider does have a tough matchup against Arizona, and he has been a little bit up and down recently. But even his bad games have you know pretty high ceilings as he gets a lot of strikeouts. Um, However, he's had one or two really bad games this season, but uh, the, the earned runs are a little bit of concern today, but he should still be able to get strikeouts. However, uh, Arizona, the last time he played them, was the lowest strikeouts he had on the season, which was seven. He is in play today, but he's a little bit risky. Pablo Lopez didn't do well versus Oakland after having a solid stretch, but even after some bad games throughout the year, he's always bounced back solidly, and I think he's capable of doing that here against Seattle. He hasn't faced Seattle, but he's averaging 20 fantasy points a game this season. And he's got that kind of upside today as well. Uh, then we'll look at Gallon for Arizona. Now he's facing Atlanta. I don't like putting pitchers against Atlanta's offense. And honestly, this game is somewhat avoidable from a pitching perspective. Uh, because it is an annoying game where a lot of runs are likely going to be scored. But uh, you know both pitchers do have capability. So it's hard to completely avoid them. Uh, but there is some potential for a lot of earned runs in this game. Blake Snell for San Diego does face Toronto. He's had nine straight games over 21 fantasy points. He's done that with a decently tough schedule. He's not giving up but three earned runs in that stretch either, which is crazy. But his uh, K rate um, has been really solid. The matchup isn't super ideal as Toronto is a good team. Uh, but you can't argue with the fact he's given up a total of uh, four earned runs uh, in this stretch of games in the last ten and he's getting a lot of, uh, getting a lot of um, wins as well. So uh, Then we'll look at Abbott for Cincinnati. Now, he does have a matchup against a team that I do think has some good bats. Uh, but he has been pretty solid so far in his starts. Uh, though his last two starts have been a little bit worse. And his K rate seems to have dropped off some. But if he can figure out where his strikeouts are, then he can be fine in this matchup. Uh, then Corbin Burns for Milwaukee is in play for against Philadelphia. He has a high floor and a low ceiling. The matchup is not super, but he does have three straight 20 fantasy point games. And he does have some decent upside here, though he is high risk, high reward, as he's given up a lot of earned runs recently. Uh, then we'll look at uh, George Kirby, who's in a very similar position uh, when it comes to high risk, high reward, as he's got a high ceiling and a low floor. Or, sorry, yeah. Um... The matchup here is not super ideal, but it does give him some strikeout upside as Minnesota does tend to strike out. So I do like some players from this team. Then we'll look at Tejon Walker uh, for Philly. Sorry about that. Um, in seven straight wins, uh, he's only had one under 20 fantasy points. Uh, mostly due to strikeout rate being a bit up and down, but the matchup isn't ideal, but it is doable here as he's pitched very well recently, and that does give him some upside uh, as a result. Uh, the win's pretty st staggering to get that many wins in a row. Uh, then we'll look at Lorenzen oopsie, uh, for Detroit. Now, he's a Hail Mary play. He's dirt cheap. He has 20 fantasy point upside. The matchup is decent. And he's definitely capable of a good game here. He's also done well against Kansas City once already this year. Though he had one bad game against them as well. So he's high risk, high reward. But he's dirt cheap and very capable in this matchup. As for catchers, um, I do think Travis Darno does start for Atlanta. So if he does start, he'll be somebody that's interesting. But my top overall play is Francisco Alvarez uh, for the Mets. As he is a core play, he draws really good metrics here. He's hit the ball very well recently. With a 4.17 average over the last 10 games, he's also averaging 13 fantasy points a game, and he's got home run potential written all over him today. Cal Raleigh is also in play for Seattle. Now, he hasn't hit the ball very well recently, but he has home run potential in this game, and that's why he's considered 
Uh, then we'll look at Yasmani Grandal for the White Sox. Now, he has also not hit the ball well, but he also draws home run upside in this matchup. Uh, but he is very high risk, high reward here. Maybe in the first base, we'll look at Pete uh, Alonzo for the Mets. Now, his batting average has really fallen off the face of the earth as he's only had three hits in the last 10 games. Uh, but we know his power, and he is due for a big game, and he is definitely capable of doing it. And he just needs to hit a home run to pay off. Uh, we'll also look at Wilmer Flores, who I do actually like quite a bit today, despite the tougher matchup. He's hitting the ball extremely well recently. He's had some really massive games, uh, which is making his fantasy points per game look really good. However, he his batting average has been solid enough that he's viable on the slate, uh, even if he doesn't hit a home run. You could also consider uh, Matt Olson, Joey Votto, and Andrew Vaughn. Moving to second base, uh, we'll look at Matt McClain for Cincinnati. Uh, his batting average has been okay recently. He hasn't hit the home runs, uh, really, but he does have good potential. He's just hitting the ball pretty solid, and that's what we need for him today, especially in a good matchup in Cincinnati, and that's what we have here. Uh, then we'll look at Whit Merrifield for Toronto. Now, he can play outfield as well. He's hitting very well recently, averaging over 10 fantasy points a game. I do like his upside here, especially with the way he's hit home runs recently. Uh, but he is high risk, high reward as he doesn't normally hit home runs all that well. Uh, but he's in a good slot right now. Uh, then we'll look at Julian. Oops, sorry, Julian for Minnesota. Now he has some good interesting upside here as he's hit the ball extremely well recently. He's had five home runs in the last ten games, which really give him a lot of utility here. Uh, he's a little bit inconsistent usually, but he's hitting the ball really solid and he's about as uh, safe as anyone at $3,100. Uh, we also consider Ozzy Albies and Jonathan Indy at this position. At third base, uh, we'll look at L.A. De La Cruz for Cincinnati. Now, he hasn't been as good recently, but he still has stolen base potential and home run potential. He feels like he's <coughs> overpriced considering the fact that he hasn't had many good games recently. But he's definitely capable, so it's just a matter of time before he has another big game. Uh, Bo Bichette is also in play for Toronto. Uh, he's... Uh, shoot. I forgot, I'm at third base, not shortstop, sorry. Wilmer Flores is also available here at third base. Now, you can put him at first or third. I do like him at first better, uh, mostly because we can throw in uh, Christian Encarnacion Strand from Cincinnati at third base here. In his three games, he had one really good game, and he's had two low games. However, he isn't striking out. He is making contact, so he definitely draws good potential here. He's also dirt cheap, and he makes it really easy to pay up for other options. Uh, we're also going to look at uh, Austin Riley, J.D. Davis, and Manny Machado at this position. Now moving to shortstop, L.A. De La Cruz is obviously in play here as well. Uh, Bo Bichette is in play for Toronto. Now he's got a tough matchup with Snell, but he has hit the ball very well recently. Um, though his fantasy points per game hasn't been super high, he does need to hit a home run to really pay off here at this price. But he's viable here. Uh, Bobby Witt Jr. is also in play for Kansas City. Now, he's been a little bit inconsistent recently. Uh, he's had some big games, but he's also had some bad ones. So, uh, his home run potential and just general hitting potential is good. He's also hit gotten some stolen bases recently, which gives him some upside as well. But he does feel high risk, high reward today. Uh, Willie Adamez for Milwaukee is also in play. Now, he hasn't hit the ball quite as well, but he does feel pretty safe today in this good matchup here. And he does. He has been managing to get some hits recently. Tim Anderson is a value play uh, at this position. Not exactly a great one, but he as he's not really a home run threat. But he is a guy that can get on base and steal bases. Though he has been really bad this season. Uh, but he does have some utility on this particular slate. Maybe in the outfield, we have five top tier options: and Ronald Acuna Jr., Tatis Jr., uh, Juan Soto, Jake Fraley, and Luis Rivera Jr. They all have really nice home run upside on the slate, and they are my top options when it comes to expensive plays in the outfield. Then we'll look at some value plays in the outfield, and we'll look at Austin Slater for San Francisco. Now, he does draw a somewhat tough matchup here, but he's hitting the ball um, pretty good this season. However, he's been a little bit slumpy recently, but he did hit a home run in his last game, last couple games. Uh, he's had two and so in the last five, so I do like his upside, but he doesn't play every day, so do make sure he drops his start today. Uh, then we'll look at Yelich for Milwaukee. Now, he is a core play today. He's a little bit overpriced, 
Uh, but he's hit the ball really well with a good home run upside in this matchup, so I do think he's viable on the slate, and he's probably one of the safer plays. Uh, Kyle Schwarber is a guy I don't typically like because he's a boomer bust play, uh, but he's hitting the ball pretty well recently, and he's getting a lot of home runs. He's had four home runs the last five games. That gives him some upside in this matchup. Uh, Conforto for San Francisco, also in play for uh, as he's hit the ball really well recently with the 300 average in the last 10 games. Not a huge home run threat, but he's hitting the ball well and scoring fantasy points in lots of different ways, which is definitely vi- makes him viable here. Kerry Carpenter for Detroit is also in play as he's hit the ball pretty solid recently, uh, averaging almost 10 fantasy points a game. Uh, he, most games he's actually getting hits, which is nice lately, and he draws a good matchup here against Kansas City's uh, pitcher. You also consider Riley Green, TJ Friedel, and Brandon Nemo, and Will Benson at this position. As for sub $3,000 plays, uh, Christian Encarnacion Strand is in play. Will Benson from Cincinnati is in play. Akil Badu is in play from Detroit. Jesse Winker from Milwaukee. Dan Vogelbach from the Mets. And Yasmani Grandal from the Chicago White Sox. With that said, guys, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. And have a nice day, guys.